Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video by yours truly. Uh, today we got some fun content for you guys. I was invited to a Honkai Star Rail competitive tournament by Vulcan, one of my good friends in this community. And it was organized by a gentleman and content creator named Tamias. Be sure to go check him out because he's the one with the 5 billion IQ strategy who developed this tournament, which I love. This I thought this was a really cool idea. But Vulcan and Grimro helped organize it and cast it and contribute to all of this getting taken care of. Uh, which, by the way, it was sponsored, I believe, by Hoyoverse themselves. And depending on how this performs with regards to views, exposure ship, and feedback, this kind of thing can continue going on and more creators might join the tournament. And it'll be a fun thing overall for the community, especially in a game that actually lacks that competitive aspect. So guys, please help Tamias out, the guy who designed this and all, and uh, get this tournament shared between everyone in the Honkai Star Rail community so that more of this content can be delivered going forward. It's a great way to incentivize people to uh, work on their accounts, be competitive to the people who actually wanna compete in these tournament settings you could do so, but we need to send them a message that people are actually enjoying it. With that out the way, I got invited to this tournament and uh, <laughs> Vulcan didn't really give me the full blown rundown. He was just like, hey, mate, you want to participate in the tournament? <laughs> My rubbish Australian accent. I was like, yeah, I guess I'll do it. I was busy as hell at the time, but I ended up saying yes, ultimately, because he told me I had three weeks to prepare for it. Um, I didn't know it was this serious. I'll be honest. I didn't even know I was getting paid. Uh, Tamias hit me up at the end of the tournament it was like yeah just so you know we'll be sending you a check when everything's all done I was like wait what I'm getting paid oh bet uh, but uh, I would like to apologize by the way to Tamias Pokey and Fu the other contestants because we were in a private discord and uh, they were doing a lot of communication with regards to how we were supposed to go about things and I was just absent a majority of the time and my partner in the tournament Pokey was making a lot of the decisions while I wasn't even there so a uh, huge cr uh, credit and thanks to him and an apology um, at the time. I'm, I'm a busy guy. Like, again, this is not the only thing I do. I'm also a personal trainer. I also have a daughter and a girl to take care of. So I was out a lot. I also don't have Discord on my phone intentionally because it's another app to distract me from, uh, you know, when I'm at the table eating dinner with my family, when I'm out talking to friends and stuff. I am somebody who is uh, very keen on being in the present and making sure I am in the present when I'm in the present. And uh, the Discord app is another way of taking you out of the present, if that makes sense. So I don't keep it on my phone to keep a long story short. And because of that, I would have to go to the computer and see what was going on. And every single time they had a full blown conversation about some things and I was just playing catch up. So I pretty much ended up telling Pokey to handle everything, handle all the decisions, and I'll just be a coachable player. And uh, that'll make much more sense when we react to the entire tournament together, because you, then you'll see, oh, Smack wasn't even there <laughs> during the ban phase. Smack wasn't there to make that decision. I left it all to Pokey's 5 billion IQ strategy. And, um, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, with all that being explained, continuing on. We are going to react to this entire tournament, provide my thoughts and insight and experience to Honkai Star Rail uh, while watching each and every one of their runs so that you guys could hopefully understand the strategy that they were utilizing because there were some tremendous 5 billion IQ plays by Pokey, by Fu, and even by Tamias. And I wanna make sure you guys understand that. So we're gonna react to each and every one of them. And then at the end, I'm gonna provide full context and show off their builds except Fu. Fu never sent his builds through, so I can't show his, but I will show Pokey's build, Tamias's build, and my build for our uh, team comp so that you guys can know, oh, so that's the investment they had to go about it the way they went about it. Uh, context is important in these, type of in these type of situations, especially tournament setting, so that you can understand how they achieved certain things. So let's get into it. I'm really excited, guys. Uh, super pumped about this. So let's let's get into it. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to dive right into the band phase picks Allow and allow Grimro and Vulcan to commentate on that. I will chime in if I feel there's anything to talk about as well. Uh, but just so you guys know, I was not a part of the band phase picks. I left it all up to Pokey because I was, uh, you know, I don't even remember what the hell I was doing, but I was busy at the time. Uh, so that's pretty funny to announce. Also, huge shout out to Vulcan and Grimro being the casters. I think you guys missed y'all's callings, bro. I think y'all are spectacular <laughs> casters. I felt like I was listening to like League of Legends during a finals tournament, bro. And Vulcan 
All right, so welcome to Picks and Bands. I'm joined here with Vulcan. I'm Grimro, and we're going to see what the teams are going to be. Vulcan, do you have any predictions on what our teams are going to end up as? No real predictions. It's always tough for these pick and ban type things. I just, I'm interested to see the bands because it's always a tough decision because you're also banning yourself from that access. So. Very true. Very true. When you ban somebody, you're also shooting yourself in the foot. He, he could have said that any better. These guys have looked at each other's accounts to know who's got what stacked on what they're going to ban, but definitely keen to see what happens. All right. Oh, here comes the first ban. We've got Pokey's team banning Silver Wolf here. A huge ban definitely going to be turning off. That and that is a huge ban. Also, we don't know what they have on their accounts. You know what I mean? So that's the other crucial thing in Stinger. But I will say Silver Wolf is absolutely a like the perfect first ban pick. She just allows way too much flexibility. She allows you to utilize characters in scenarios that you shouldn't be able to utilize them in. It just allows the other team to work their way around certain things if we ban characters that we don't want them to have. It's huge. Vulnerability access there. 100% just th oh, good that's job, just an easy ban for the other team but also you do lose access so that may may have been a core part of someone's team that we don't know absolutely yeah we've got a, ooh, Tim's team banning Natasha out really starting to whittle down those healers could be <laughs> that this this was the biggest 5 billion IQ play I believe Fu was the one in charge of the strategy behind their bans bro and oh my god I took the brunt of it guys denying those healers there if they turn all of those off things could be getting pretty tough also, that loss of access to the cleanse as well could be an issue. We'll have to wait and see. Absolutely. Turn them up a little more. Definitely be pretty tough here. And Poke, okay, we've got our light cone bans here. Banning out Sele's light cone, hopefully hindering her potential. Now, I did think this was an interesting ban. I feel like Pokey, because he did say he was cool with Tamias. I feel like he knew what Tamias' account, account looks like. And he probably banned that light cone because Tamias probably has a stacked uh, Scylla. That's just my best guess. I actually don't know. But that was an interesting ban for me, if I'm being honest. She is one of the most played DPS. So hindering her now is definitely maybe a good option. A hundred percent. I think it, it's honestly the cones are a very interesting one. It's versatile as well. It's not just for Zilla. She You can use that on any hunt character. So almost out of the mix now. Definitely. I think it's definitely a worthwhile one. Oh my gosh. Out of nowhere, Tim's team. Another one, another interesting ban for me because I literally don't even have that light cone built up. So it did nothing to my account in terms of uh, value. I feel like it's more of a Wells pick, you know, because Wells have that probably at S5. That's a 24% damage bonus to everyone who has the same exact element. But yeah, again, I, I really didn't see the value in that pick as well. Banned planetary rendezvous here. I have no idea. That is definitely a very interesting choice of light cone there. Why would you think they would have banned that Vulcan? I think they completely refused to ban Branya's light cone because we all need Branya's light cone. <laughs> Must be looking at core synergies between elements. I honestly don't don't know why that would be in the, the pick for them, but maybe they had a strategy that they're banning it with from themselves. I don't know. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, on to our unit ban. Second round here, we've got a Sushank. So Su Shang, just off rip, I'll go ahead and tell you, I needed Su Shang for the first for the second half. I would have rather had a Su Shang than a Kafka on that second half. Uh, and it's because she's actually one of the absolute best characters to utilize against Kafka boss. She shreds the hell out of her shield, allowing me to achieve the break effect much quicker with Luca, which would amplify that damage and get her out of there much faster. Su, Su Shang was actually a huge ban uh, for not only them, but it also hurt me. <laughs> But I mean, my Sushang wasn't built up, so Pokey made that ban with the understanding that my Sushang was only level 70 and not really optimized. Ban from Pokey? Well, wow, really, just ignoring all those top tier five stars and going straight for the four star ban there. See, when what I will say with Grimrose, I think he underestimated Su Shang respectfully, because if she is built up to the brim, she will obliterate Kafka. A lot of people were impressed with the Himiko run in there, which was a tremendous run. I think. They would have been impressed with a Su Shang that was well developed if she went up against Kafka. Uh, it must be that one must be a bit of an insight into the enemy players and second half. Uh, I don't know. Purely a second half play. Using Su Shang to clap it. I, I, I don't yeah. know on that Purely one. Purely a second I mean, half play. Secret tech or someone on the other team uses Su Shang or something like that. Okay, Tim coming out. This was the I'm not. I was so salty when I saw this. Cause I was just like, bro, cause I'm on the second half guys. I'm going against the Kafka who seduces people. I'm going against the freaking general who launches a spear at your head. 
They banned both the healers, and Natasha's a cleanser. Bailu at least brings you back to life if you don't if you get uh, if you can't cleanse. So I was left with Japard. Double healer Only one sustainer here. left. You know that Bailu ban really limiting things off. Remember, he is getting first pick, his team. So it definitely makes sense here. Hundred percent must be making it look like obviously Lorch and Japard being the two big ones, and then maybe running. Also, they get first pick, so they banned Natasha and Bailu. So they get the first pick. I think you can figure out who they're going to pick. In the other one, on the side, trying to I think they do. Or do they not? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He does. He picks up. Yeah. So look at this. Look at this 5 billion IQ play. Ban Natasha Bailu secured Lorcha. And Lorcha is easily top three most valuable units for the second half. Last remaining healer, Luocha, here. So he is going to lock that in. And the enemy team has no real healers other than Japard to pick. Yeah, that's just a completely solid first pick based on those bands. That was clearly the strategy moving straight into it by Tim. Absolutely. It's a good choice. And Pokey, now he gets two picks here for his team. He Beautiful. And we had to secure that because if they would have took Japard, I would have been virtually, I would have been left with virtually no survivability on that second half. I'm also not a, a, a whale or a dolphin. So I don't, I would have been. That's, that's it. Pokey literally saved my life with that pick. I was pick up the remaining sustaining character in Japard and also scoops up Tingyun, a great accompaniment for a, I, a, a beautiful picks. Like, I would choose Tingyun over Branya any uh, day of the week in a band phase because Tingyun is universal to every team. Branya isn't. We don't know who our DPS are yet. So, yeah, it, it, he literally picked. I wasn't there, but it was like I was there in spirit. Out of character. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, when you get locked out of any sustain units and Japard's your only one, the next thing you look to is that hyper carry team. So you're going to try mm -hmm. and pick up the supports that enable that one. Otherwise, you're kind of boned. Yep, kill them before they kill you. Absolutely. And Tim taking Asta here with Bronya still on the board. He goes for Asta. Oh, my goodness. What you I'll be honest with you. I Even I thought this was an interesting pick. Now, Asta's tremendous for the first half. Absolute tremendous unit. But there's so many more options that they could have went with. But then, after I watched it, I was like, oh, okay, so that's the strategy. That's interesting. Maybe he's got to play his lining up for the... Yeah, uh, the first a play we never, we never would have guessed. Maybe when he's got Luoch, he's like, okay, I'm kind of set in the Kafka side. Uh, now we need to pick up a support for the, the fire side. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Dude, these sure. animations yeah, in the absolutely. beginning are okay, awesome. Well, <laughs> this this stuff in the, the, the middle. Back, stealing Bronya away. The opportunity for Tim to have him was there, but now Perky takes... So yeah, Branya's a huge uh, option, right? R why is she a huge option? Well, she's good for both the first half and the second half. More tailored to the second half if you utilize Blade, if we get to pick up Blade. And then for the first half, Pokey is one of the people who will zero cycle. So having three nuke uh, supports that can amplify that one main DPS's damage is huge. And he secured two of them. He only needs one uh, remaining. Yeah, I mean, that's just a solid pick. That, that's telegraphed. That was a pretty good, so, solid pick. Absolutely. I mean, Pronya is top tier. Absolutely. Okay, Tim, coming back, taking a pellet here. Well, there's not too many supports left, so pellet definitely makes sense. Definitely very flexible, especially. What's crazy is like this This shows you the insane value of Pella because Pella is like n this MOC 10, nothing is weak to ice. So like having her is purely for her defensive shred, which is huge because she hits everybody out there on the field, allowing people like Kafka who deal good AOE, Himiko who, who deal good AOE to utilize and amplify their damage. But it's those aren't even picks I would have secured. Not this early. would have gone for something else because they've already got the strip. Yep. Um, so the Pella strip isn't needed, but uh, obviously True. it's pretty much all that's left. True. Me. I couldn't like... Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Pokey now. Guys, I can't wait till we get to Foo's run because it makes so much sense why they chose those two. Because I was like, bro, wait, what? And then I see his run and I'm like, oh my God, that was gorgeous. First damage dealer on the board sampo okay definitely telegraphing a big kafka composition here also obviously with, with the current uh the cycle buff uh the memory chaos buff it's it's a solid choice absolutely getting that extra would i have chose sampo this early I'm, I'm gonna keep it a stack this is where my picks would have deviated from pokey's picks I, if I had Bronya, i would have picked up blade right here instead of sampo 100 percent. i would have picked up blade and that would have been a huge secure uh, two picks for the second half because Blade is also in the top three most valuable characters for that second half. Yeah, dot damage at the end of every cycle is good. Okay, Tim, and, and there uh, you go. They've scooped up the Blade. His team here in Blade, a huge pick here. 
played, obviously. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm curious to see. I'm going to turn off my camera so you guys could see. The dot on their first damage pick, but. Uh, well, we can keep it on you know, until. It should be fine. Blade is a solid unit, but I, I always think of him more as that reliable, consistent unit as opposed to that hyper carry. Like Blade is literally god tier well, for that second half. With Blade and Luocha here. And, and first half. Poki's going to be stealing up Yukong here. Wow. Okay, so, they've got three supports all. So now, as you could see, we now have three nuke bomb supports, which means if we want to, we can make one half have that hyper carry setup, which is huge. And then the other half is going to be focused on what we have remaining. What I, what I will say about this scenario that's tough is now I'm left having to play the scraps. <laughs> I got the scraps, bro. I'm ready here. So definitely focusing on that hyper carry team you mentioned. Definitely looks like the case and, and pretty much safe pick there. Otherwise, they're going for probably like five DPS units, and I think that extra support's probably the way to go. Absolutely. Okay, Tim, grabbing wealth here. A bit of a utility and damage. Guys, this one stung. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, we can go ahead and turn the camera off. This one stung quite a bit for me because my number one team for that second half is Blade, uh, Welt, Lorcha, and then the 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 final pick could be somebody like Yu Kong, could be somebody like Ting Yun or Branya. That's usually my go-to for the second half. And they secured the most important units for the second half. Blade, Well, and Lorcha all taken. So this one stung me so hard. I'm not gonna lie. Like these bands, every single one of them, I felt them minus Asta and Pella. I was like, God damn, that hurts. Hybrid pick here. Definitely a bit of a lower play rate one though. Def maybe a bit of an insult here at Pokey, who was a guaranteed Welt player. No, uh, yeah. I mean, I, the, the Welt is an interesting one because- No, he's he not. Welt is literally cracked for the second half. I know I keep pausing guys. It's probably gonna be a lot of pausing. There's so much to say. Welt, literally perma slows and debuffs every cycle not perma but as soon as they come they get delayed and it allows you to set up everything for your composition because they can't go first when generally the enemy will hit you first and summon people they can't do anything because welt has them slowed and delayed upon entering the battle furthermore welt contributes to shield breaking with his ult he contributes to shield breaking with his skill he deals decent damage he increases the damage of your entire party with his ult he is literally cracked for that second half. I'm not kidding. Great unit. Another unit I would have liked to have had. Us clears, he's not the first thing that comes to mind, but he does buff that damage. So um, might be my inexperience with welts as I've never pulled one. So that it yeah, makes sense. I, think definitely I have to look. Across the bow at Pokey, the biggest welt enjoyer. All right, though, Pokey is going to grab Himiko. Himiko of all characters with so many big ones on the board here. Well and I, I, this was a, a crazy pick, but it wasn't a crazy pick at the same time. So I, I never played with Himiko. Uh, but I do understand her kit generally. And the first half is so heavy against the pyro element. God damn it, bro. Fuck against Against the fire element. It's so heavy against the fire element that it does make sense. She is somebody who's capable of dealing damage, which I've always known. It's not surprising because if you tailor a team around her, I could totally see it happening against the first half. So it wasn't a big surprise, but I also was like, out of the options we had available, going for Himiko was interesting, but I, I feel like Pokey did it purely for content, which makes it even more respectful. She definitely gets her time to shine here, maybe. Honestly, I really like that pick. I, I am a big Himiko fan, like a bit of a closet Himiko fan. Obviously, I'm big on QQ, but uh, Himiko, <laughs> I, I, I can get around that pick. Kind of makes sense. Really solid for clearing out the trash. Uh, and honestly, I think she's actually not a bad pick. Maybe she's going to be secretly powerful here. Let's, let's see. Okay, Tim, going to pick up a little bit more sustain here for his team in fire main character. Guys. Definitely not exceptionally strong. When you look at who they're securing over here, it blows my mind, man. The fire trailblazer. But then again, he had no choice as well, right? Because they, uh, well, they secured Lorcher for the second half, and then they have only one more sustainer left. And the craziest thing about this for me is that this sustainer actually happens to be one of the best sustainers for the first half because their taunt allows the two sisters who do a ridiculous amount of damage and are incredibly fast, their taunt allows them to only focus the trailblazer. So if timed correctly with the taunt, the rest of your units are protected and good to go. So it was crazy that they were choosing these these picks, yeah, I mean, man. I was like, oh, because you would think they're, they're horrible picks, but they're actually very calculated picks. Absolutely. Oh, okay. And then oh, Narkafka, yeah. An early Kafka. Kafka is protected here, but just just wanted to getting it out of the way there. Yeah. 
Yeah, huh. Should he have chose Kafka last? I'm trying to think about that. Because it doesn't, we both get to choose Kafka. But who else would we have picked now that I'm thinking about it? I, don't, I mean, I think it didn't matter at this point. The last two picks are going to be Kafka Luca. Like, who else are you going to pick? Yeah, I mean, my only guess is, like, they're going for the safe picks for the final two, but we'll have to see what the final pick is. Yep, okay, Tim. The Go general. Genuine here. Okay, so he's got three damage dealers on his team now to select from, but no no sign of Kafka yet for Tim. In my opinion, Jing Yuan would have been a, a great unit for the first half if you had somebody to take care of the cleanse because you don't want them getting stunned. But I thought it was an interesting pick to have. Then again, I think their strategy with this was more about securing main DPSs, playing defense, and making sure we didn't get Lorcha, Blade, or Jing Yuan and making it more difficult on the second half team, which was me. And they did a great job because it literally stripped me of Blade, Lorcha, Jingyu. I, I, my hands was tied by my back. I will say though, Jingyu wins kind of mid for the second half. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm assuming we can lock that in. They're playing boss, defense, guys. Jing is another interesting one. So you must be looking at just like Blade Welt on the one side and then I'm assuming going Lightning on the other side. And there's our Luca. He goes for the Luca to complete the full team here. Definitely looking a bit like a calf to Luca Sampo. So Pokey and I had talked about this too. Um, I, again, when I was present and communicating with in the Discord, I told him that Luca and Sampo were very strong for the second half, but I needed my units with them, right? I needed skill point friendly units like Blade and Lorcha, which we couldn't get. And that left me with people like Kafka and Japar. Thing here, which is very, very aggressive a hundred percent and i'm very curious to see this one i'm assuming we're going to get the kafka on tim's final one so let's just see what that happens to be as well yep locks in the kafka so four damage dealers for tim there all right there very we go interesting and they're all big hitters a hundred percent i'm very curious to see this uh the pokey team just looks more uh what i was sort of expecting and it looks like tim's team just sort of gave him free reign to pick up the the dot synergies <laughs> yeah, Vol this went way over volk's head bro dude securing lorcha blade and welt for that second half was a dagger to my heart bro it's that way but sustain is going to be the number one question because we're going to have to see some pretty fast clears to ensure our teams don't go down here and himiko might be the standout star after all we'll have to see with all the healer bands we've seen, Fu's team looks to be going all in on offense for team one on side one here. Kafka will almost certainly be the main damage. So Fu's up first. Using her skill every action she possibly can. Asta will be the primary support, looking to keep her ultimate and charging stacks up almost permanently to give Kafka and the rest of the team way more speed and way more actions. That's going to cost a lot of skill points though, so Pella and Fireman character are likely going to be spamming their basics as much as possible, while also trying to provide as much utility as possible. Fu can rely on Fireman character's taunt here and there, but it's going to be risky. Fu is up first here. So I want to just, I want to comment, this is off rip so that you guys know. This was the most uh, impressive run out of the tournament for me personally, and I think Fu deserves all the credit and flowers. Uh, we will comment at it, on it as it goes by, but guys, be sure to support Fu. Um, he needs way more credibility than he currently has. Go check out his channel. I will be sure to link his channel down below. This was such a phenomenal run. It's a potential, actually, no, it is a free to play Kafka team, potentially. I need to see his builds, honestly, but it is achievable even if whatever he has on his builds is somehow a little bit of budget induced, right? The fact that he still did it with this team is, is is insane. I can't wait to comment on this. This stuff is incredible. If a team won, and he is certainly on a very aggressive team, he's going to be wanting to look for fast cycle clears, not only for the competition, but also the, so he survives. So just to off rip, opening up with that Kafka ult puts the lightning dot on every single uh, unit. So when he amplifies with uh, Kafka, they're already going to get popped. Nice. Do you think he's gonna be able to get it? Attack percent buff. Zero cycle and wave huge for Kafka dot. Zero cycle. I, I mean, I, I, so now I they all take their dot. That, but uh, I mean, he's got a pretty decent setup. Like I asked her for the break against the fire units. We got obviously shields got the getting created. As well. we don't have okay, so everyone's ults are up right here. This is important to establish. So it's more of just Kafka. Notice he does not use Asta's ult. He saves it. For work. We do have the burn that we can get from the breaks. So now, as soon as they go into the second cycle. 
the uh the second phase he immediately pops asta's ult this is so huge guys and also from asta's basics so notice he also uses pella's out. ult and then follows up Absolutely. with kafka's ult. Asta ultimate is looking like it's gonna be sticking around and staying up so something that's important to take note here is when you pop Ka uh, asta's ult as long as you have her e2 i believe it you it saves you from having to use her skill which is a skill point friendly uh play to keep her five stacks of attack boost up. So you pop her ult, she gives a speed boost to the party, and now the next time she's up, you still have five stacks without even having to utilize a skill. So it's a good uh, skill point tactic. Then he uses Pella to defensive shred everybody out on the field. So now Kafka, when she ults, is getting full blown damage uptime, maximum damage uptime. I can see here that Kafka is looking very, very 58,000 damage. Like nice. Two to three actions. See, Plus basic attack, building, building keeping that skill that point. Damage. Nice. So that's going to be a massive amount of skill point consumption. But it looks like Pella and five main character are doing their job. Nicely. And then this is huge, right? Waits for the uh, big boy to summon the two units. Everybody so is weak to fire, right? So he pops ult with fire MC. Look at this break effect damage. Bro had some solid break effect damage. And the thing about the pyro element is it has the highest initial break effect damage in the game. It's dot isn't that impressive, but it's initial break effect is, is insane. And then the dot, since it takes 200% increase, thanks to that MOC's current MOC buff, even the fire dots dealing solid damage in this particular scenario. Dude, but again, I'd be, five I'd head plays in thought process from Boo. There, but this is AOE fight, so you can't really stress about it. So I've got use it on Astra and use it on uh, the old Kafka and do as much damage as possible. Secures everybody. Now, this is the important thing, and I need y'all to pay attention to this. Notice that Asta and Pella are going a third time before this cycle ends. This is why he saved his Asta ult for the second cycle and spammed it as soon as the second cycle began. It was to ensure that Asta and Pella had enough speed to go three times in a single cycle, which is incredibly important to making sure their ults are up for the third cycle and repeating this strat again. It's it, This blew me away. I was like... And uh, so I, that's why I want to see his builds. I want to see how much speed they have. I imagine that once Asta pops her ult, they're probably sitting at over 200 speed, both of them, because the other two didn't go three times. Oh, absolutely. But it looks like the enemy isn't even getting a chance to do anything with those breaks from Asta yep. Pella. Look Why at that damage, man. Kafka? That 200% dot increase is crazy. But look, now they're both Asta and Pella ults are up. They just haven't even had a chance to respond. Immediately so pops them. Same strat. As soon as the, uh, the fight starts, yeah, pops both ults. Time defensive shred the down to both of them speed up, up. Yeah, now they're going three times yeah, again on this third cycle a bit rough here, though. These enemies have no break i will say he didn't provide builds right but i do see an energy recharge boost right here so i think he also has asta at least at e4 or the battle pass uh light cone that wasn't too bad. okay he's looking to spread the break by the look of it because that first asta skill went all on one yes he split the enemy he's slowly but surely um, getting their both their shields well. down equally Maybe he would have gone for the break all in on one, but he's, he's looking for that oh, quick. I missed it. So he did it so fast, I missed it. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. Let's go back. Because this is important to point out. This is this is very important to point out. Enemies have no break bar damage on them so far, and they're about to move. Do you think he's gonna be able to survive? I tell you what, that wasn't too bad. Okay, he's so he said, do you think he's gonna be able to survive? Because that first Asta skill went all on. This is it. This is how he survives right here. He pops that taunt to ensure that they don't hit anybody else. See, he taunted both of them. So now they're only going to hit the tankiest person on the team who can take the hits. And now his other characters are secured and safe. As well. From here on out, he just has to make sure he plays his cards right with regards to lining up buffs. Quick, clear. So he's trying to get it, bring him down evenly by the looks of it. Absolutely, but all the damage he's taking is permanent and Pella is at But see, this is also important because he's getting both of their shields down to ensure the break with the Fire MC. So the Fire MC can deal a ton of initial break damage and then Kafka can amplify the Fire Dot damage. But I want you guys to be clear here. The Fire Dot is garbage, but in this MC with a 200% increase in Dot damage, the Fire Dot actually does work. <laughs> and the enemies are going to get another chance to attack here, it looks like. Here it comes. Oh my goodness. Okay, very lucky. Going to that Man, this was so beautiful, nice. bro. So how do you think that these breaks are going to play out? Is he going to be able yep. to get it done? Oh, that's unfortunate. Looks like he's only used one. That's unfortunate. Kafka broke the other person's dot. I don't know. I don't think he wanted that to happen. I think he wanted it to be broken by uh, the Fire MC. Cycle. 
I just realized that. Interesting to see what his builds are. I'm curious to see what the break is on his. Look fire at him. MC. Both their ults are up again. Trying to do, I'd imagine his fire MC would also have very high. Making the fire MC get inside of that cycle. Years, so, I'm curious to see Crazy. what Crazy on this skill. Not too bad, not too bad, but obviously not. And the then same boom! Way. Look at that damage right there, bro. 102k, man. Effect is having a pure dot. That dot was huge. Yeah, it was massive. There. And Absolutely, getting that end of cycle trigger really paying a lot of dividends there. Looks like he's going to get it done in just two cycles here. There it is. This was it's such an insane run game. for me, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like, Foo, you that are a legend bad. for that run, bro. Oh, that was pretty Holy solid. hell. And the thing that really worked in his favor in that one was definitely that cycle buff from the MOC we currently have going on. For Team 2, Mr. Poche is okay. going all in on Himiko with an incredible This is the talk of the town run. Team. People Triple were blown away by Himiko's performance. To mention. Himiko will almost certainly be using her skill every action, and Yukong, Bronya, and Tingyun will likely take turns between using their basics and their yeah. powerful supporting skills and ultimates. We now have Mr. So the beautiful thing about this composition is that it's a hyper buff composition, right? You have a Tingyun, a Bronya, a Yukong, and they're all buffing the absolute shit out of Himiko. Um, and then Himiko herself is just going to obviously be the main DPS. Okay, kicking it off for team two. The drawback is he does not have a single healer, so his supports need to be very, very beefy. Yeah, with another incredibly also, speed needs to be high. Himiko and three supports. How do you think this is... So, what's important to note here is just what happened already off-rip. The, uh, their speed is so high that the, the, the freaking... I'll, I'll go ahead and show you in a bit. Hold on, because this is important to point out. These two right here, the two in the middle, the two freaking casters and spell ladies, I don't know what their names are. They're very fast. And if you're not faster, they're gonna start off dealing damage to your team immediately. So it's important that he immediately started dealing damage and that his units were faster than their units so that they couldn't deal any damage to him because he doesn't have a healer, no healer whatsoever. So if he's not faster than them, he's already off on the wrong foot by taking damage because he has no healer. This is the most hyper Himiko I've ever seen, but obviously in the draft, they kind of got shafted on the defensive. That's a huge buff. Supports. They've only got Japard for their defensive supports to use. So 159,000 damage. Hyper carry as possible. And with the cleave. So already zero cycled the first turn. That was huge. From Himiko, I guess that's the plan just to be able to cleave down all the ads. Buff to Himiko from Tingyun. Buff to Himiko again from Branya. Bosses and this shit here is wild. Same time, I am wrapped to be seeing some Himiko action in this. Crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, E6 Yukong buff now given to Himiko. Massive. And now, Branya, crit damage, attack percent buff given to Himiko. Huge buffs. Holy, 240,000 damage so far. 240. What is this thing built on? That is. That is 240 plus another 94. That's pretty much damn near 350k damage on that guy's head. Or, well, not bad, bad. AOE, AOE. Now, ult is up. With that talent from Himiko, we're seeing a crazy performance here. And right now, on zero cycle. He probably wants to build energy up on his Yukong. He was probably contemplating it, and instead he went for saving skill points. Now, this was a five head play right here. He calculated that Branya was the last to go on this cycle so that she could bring Himiko back up before the cycle ends to ensure the zero cycle remains zero cycle going into the final phase. Think about it. He's there was only the one ultimate, risky so play right here. Skills into him and it was... He tries to alt it. He looks like he is going to use that skill. So is this going to actually get the clear before the cycle? Yeah, Vulcan, he pointed it out phenomenally. It was important that he not use Himiko's ult and save it for the next cycle. So he needed to kill this guy without using Himiko's ult. It's going to get the break. So this is the worst scenario, too. You're like, please die, please die. Okay. <laughs> it looked like he, it and now he gets to save. That ultimate just in case yep. it work. That yep. was a good play because it resets when you move side. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. That was definitely a good play there. So we do have two firewick enemies here for Himiko to absolutely That sucks up. because Himiko was and buffed so that damage was booty cheeks because she didn't have no buffs beat that two cycle team from earlier though we'll have to see it's all about getting one broken because if we break one of them we do get that follow-up attack which is going to deal some juicy damage and then we really want those breaks as well i think it's going to take at least one cycle because you want to get that so this was already a stinger because they're they're focusing on yukong uh heavy but 
cycle. Did they go the yet? Okay, they went already. already. So as you call, ended up surviving right there, which was huge because they could very well focus one person and then that person dies and you have to reset. It is an RNG and a little bit of luck involved. And before then, which we're not going to get. Absolutely, but Yukon is incredibly low right now, and the enemies look like they might get another attack coming. Yeah, his skill points still looking a little low. Are also looking a little low. Mm -hmm. for Poke here, he's now going in and having a bit of a look at what he wants to do with his Bronya. Use the basic attack or the skill. Definitely a tough call here. But Himiko is up next, so very likely going to be that. Yeah, I would have done the same thing because if he would have did that skill, he would have put himself in a pretty weird spot. He's got a lot of damage and break. Together. There's the buff given to uh, Himiko crit rate. A crit damage he attack should, percent if he can get one more turn through that bronya giving an extra skill he might just get it it's not going to get the full ting yun alt to buff so he's just gonna have to waste that basic there is he gonna go for the skill here on yukong though because, oh he does okay so he does look like he's going all in yeah yeah this was a gamble too skill fully buffed here. so he's going for the the person on the right which is huge because he knows the other one's shield's going to get broken regardless can he get it done? It looks like he's getting 68,000. The, the follow up. The oh my God. So Woo! Woo! Oh my God. Bro, look at that Yukon, bro. Oh my God. This is huge. But the biggest L right here is that she got CC'd. He would have been able to pop her ult if he, if he didn't get CC'd, which would have been huge. I don't know if it would have got him to kill, though. Oh my gosh, Yukon and Hibiko are almost down. Oh, and Hibiko is CC'd. Otherwise, he could have had it. He would, Bron, you can boost her back though. I don't think it would have uh, mattered. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's, it would have mattered. He's never going to clear it in that cycle, so he's yeah. pretty safe to get it in this one, though, I feel. I feel like he's got it now. Gets that follow-up, which was on cue from when getting CC'd. Pop the burst. Oh, there it is. Big damage. And we have a Tinyun ultimate. Yeah, this was huge, well, man. It definitely looks like it's going to be a pretty simple clear here, and it's going to be wrapping up in two cycles here. It's respect. What I will say, though, with people were blown away by this run because it was Himiko doing it and, and people sleep on Himiko in this community period but I always knew she was capable of this which is why I never commented on her performance when I did the podcast in Tectone's uh um gotcha podcast Pokey knew her performance and I love the fact that he did this so that he could show people if you know what you're doing she can pop off no question about it in her niche and the other thing that's important to note is that his DP, his supportive DPSs were fully loaded and fully beefy. They had steak, lobster, and shrimp uh, investment, <laughs> which we'll get around to that at the end. But if you don't have a beefy enough supportive team, then you're not going to be able to hyper buff it the way he just did it. It was, it was a tremendous job that requires a lot of knowledge and understanding of the cycles and the understanding of the enemies and how they move and operate. All right, let's move on. Team one. Boost run. Tim looks to be sporting a more traditional double DPS comp consisting of Blade and Jinyuan. This works thanks to Blade's low skill point cost. For supports and sustain, he's got Welt and Luocha. Welt will likely be using his basic attack a good amount of times, but might use his skill and ultimate to provide support to Blade and Jing. So taking over. The, the Jin Yuen was, was only put on this team, I imagine, because he had nobody else. Uh, I think Tim, Tim's a whale, if I understand correctly. He didn't have anybody else probably to use, so he just threw Jin Yuen in the mix. But the Blade, Welt, and Lorcha is really all that's needed. He probably could have just did just those three alone. <laughs> Uber, four, team one here. But we his team was a defensive very, play, very man. Team focusing on Blade and a defensive Jin play. I, could, I had no access to any of these people. Resistance enemies. Do you think Jing is going to be able to pull out the win? Jing is 100% a criminal on this team because he he's skill point hungry welt skill point hungry and and then you have blade who's not skill point hungry skill point friendly but having genuine welt and blade is a bit of the negative skill point side which means he has to use autos on welt uh, in certain situations to ensure his skill points are optimized well he's gonna have to do the best he can i know tim had some issues in drafting because he's got so many e6 characters so he yeah. he did get left with whatever he had i mean great auto team when we look at the blade luocha but can he get it done in cycles that's the question absolutely and the first thing no we're problem to get this early wave done here in zero cycles that luocha ultimate despelling all those revival effects is huge Oh, and there it is. He just barely just zero cycle. Zero cycles here on wave two. But see, Welt doesn't let the team move. The Welt literally well. doesn't let them move. To the wind, so he's got resistances to dance God, I love Welt, man. Thing, but if he can just keep see, he had to use auto attack right there for skill point friendly. Down enough, we could get some big damage out of the lightning lord on this proc. 
Absolutely, it's almost like he's playing a three damage team instead of a two damage team using that wealth where he Oh, he uses skill right there. And also that Gonna need that ult. It, it would appear he's doing a auto attack skill, auto attack skill method with wealth to ensure skill optimization. Yeah, the strip, yep, 100%. All the way, oh, get that strip. Is. Perfect. Okay, outstanding. Looks like he's getting this done phenomenally quickly. Blade and Jing and well. Oh, he used skill again right there. With support here. Two skills in a row. Alt up. But see, this is why Lorcha is so goddamn cracked. He always autos. Always. So you always have a plus one with Lorcha. He's also very fast, so he goes twice in one turn. He, You never have to worry about actually using his skill. He cleanses this guy so that he can't heal himself. Like, Lorcha's so goddamn invaluable on this side, man. Pretty early in the next cycle as well for that damage buff. Also for a bit of, you know, safe time for him. But he doesn't really have to worry about the damage. All he needs to worry about is these cycles. And he is going to get it done here with that Lightning Lord perfectly on the cycle. Also, this is an incredibly fast pace for a team one thing I'm noticing his blade is doing some absurd damage to not have a single support on the team apart from welts ult it looks like jing and blade really putting out the damage 68k here. right there bro the off the domination on jing though. no buffs that's okay He's, he should have the cleanse before 44 jing's oh did he did he miss a move there he might have he didn't get the cleanse off on jing there oh, there it is there it is okay finally getting that cleanse and jing is back in the battle Definitely That's an buff money. increase that right that there. Cleanse, you could be in a bit of a pickle, but obviously we got the Lurcher who does have two chances to do it, whether it's by auto or whether it's on his active use, but it is definitely a must-have in this one. Yeah, Jing Yuan is 100% shackling him on his run. 30k. Heal. Full health heal by Lurcher. <laughs> Like I said, survival's not really... Oh my god, dude, that spear. Holy hell. Yikes! Issue could have been an issue there if the Luocha got hit by that attack though, because he was up oh, skill point friendly there. Nice, pretty low, but luckily. The oh, the that was huge, bro! Full the counter, bang, eighty four k on the head into an ult. Into an ult. Timed. Ninety five thousand. This man's blade is doing absurd damage. It doesn't have a single support on the team, bro. Even though that lighting resistance is dead, Jing definitely seems 36. Like that blade just casually popping off, bro. Everything in there to try and get the lighting lord to clean it up in this cycle, but will it get there? J just missing it out. Capgrid 13% after that cycle shift, and he will get it pretty safely in this cycle, though. Absolutely. Looks like he's going to be on track for a three cycle clear here, which is definitely yeah. not bad at all for side two. Blade and GG's. I think they can definitely be pretty confident. Blade GG's. Yeetsters. It's all going to come down to the last round. No, Did I think that was, that was three cycles. Yeah, I think they did it on accident. Next team looks incredibly well-rounded, sporting the traditional capital. Oh, okay, so now it's time for me, I guess. Yeah, yeah, let me go ahead and explain everything. Oh, boy, here we go. Safely in this cycle, here we go. Absolutely. Looks like he's going to be on track for a three-cycle clear here, which is definitely not bad at all for side Yeah, three-cycle clear. I think they can what definitely I be pretty confident. They've got a fighting chance here to get the big W here in this tournament. It's all going to come down to the Oh, wait, yeah, he's, he's... Team 2's Duchess Smacks team okay. looks incredibly well-rounded, sporting the traditional Kafka main carry and Sample and Grim. sub DPS. Grim Bucko. Kafka and Japard are anything but well rounded in this in this scenario. That's it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's probably the worst picks in the game for this scenario. <laughs> Guys, Kafka, the boss, has a 40% resistance to the lightning element, making my Kafka's damage completely. Futile. Like, it just, she doesn't do that. Kafka is literally a support on this team for Sampo and Luca because I had nobody else to use. The thing is, most enemies in the game have a 20% resistance to the element they aren't weak to. But Kafka, the boss, has a 40% weakness to lightning. So, again, my Kafka was completely useless. Japard doesn't have a cleanse at all. Japard also can't heal the team. So, he's a solo sustainer with no cleanse, and Kafka can seduce anybody on my team and then there's nothing i can do about it composition with japad as the solo sustainer the, the main question is how gutcha smack is going to deal with the mind control correct from Kafka in moc side yeah. two without any form of cleanse it could get a little dicey the main issues with using japad on this side one he's incredibly slow so he's not as skill point friendly as lorcha two he's an ice element character that doesn't deal a lot of toughness 
he only can contribute to toughness breaking by the smallest bit towards the general. He has no contribution towards toughness break against Kafka, whereas Lorcha can literally uh, help contribute to toughness breaking to both of them. Then he can't heal the team. And then to top all of this off, I can only auto attack with him because I have to in order to have good skill point friendliness on the team. Him and Kafka versus Blade and Lorcha are a night and day difference. Blade and Lorcha would have allowed me to always spam my Luka and Sampo skills. But on this team comp, I actually need Kafka as a support to amplify Luka and Sampo's dots. So I have to use her skill and Japard is too slow to funnel more skill points that I need. So there's a lot of scenarios in here where I have to make some sussy plays for skill point optimization. His gacha snatch is up next, and he's got a big task ahead of him. But I can see a bit of a challenge here. His team doesn't have a cleanse on him. <laughs> This was already a brutal scenario. I have no AOE on my team other than Kafka. Nobody's weak to the lightning element. She doesn't have any buffers, so <laughs> this was already a horrible start. Is he gonna be okay up against the enemy Kafka in the final wave with those charms? I tell you, it's something you never want to bring in without is that cleanse because it is huge and obviously RNG dependent. He's only got one defensive use. So the whole goal here is to keep my team fully shielded at all times with Lorcha. Because if I don't, it's all she wrote. Unit. So you obviously want to keep that unit available to yourself, but you don't really want to lose the damage either. So I don't think he has a preferred target to get charmed. He's just going to have to play it as it is. Right here, I'm yep, trying to debate whether I should hold ult, but I can't afford to hold ult. Done. It looks like ooh, he's going to miss that zero cycle there. The revive from these two stings, right? If I had Lorcha, I could prevent them from reviving or better AI. AOE, I could just overhaul the the revive, but I don't have no AOE and no uh, nobody to to debuff their revive. So I just have to. <laughs> They're also not weak to anybody except uh, Japar. How do you think he's going to be able to use Luka to get these buffs off there? Unfortunately, I think that's just part part of what he's got. This this boss is cater made to the Luocha and yep. Blade combo, and yep. he doesn't have that. At least he does have that one buff removal, so he's just going to have to focus on the boss and just work on double. True, I forgot about that. Killing those ads. There's no point trying to spread the damage. Put it all in on the boss and just. So I needed to freeze him right there. This was actually calculated. I had to freeze the general right there because if you don't freeze him, he can. He can dash and then chunk his, uh, his, what do, you, what do you call it? Spear. My bad. I'm with brain dead. He can dash and chunk his spear at one of my units. None of them have a shield on right now, right? So if I didn't freeze him right there to build up the meter for, uh, right. Japar, I would have died. Somebody would have died. Buff removal, so he's just going to have to focus on the boss and just work on double. So kill. you'll notice, you see this right here? I don't have a lot of meter built up. If I auto attack, it's not going to fill up his meter. So I couldn't take the chance of one of these guys getting hauled with a spear by the general. So I oh, had to freeze him no and waste the skill the point. Put it all in on the boss and just try and nuke him whilst letting those ads just do what they have to do because you don't want and that at this point healing. that is the most important thing yeah absolutely having that boss heal is what i was going to say i lost my train of thought uh luca is the only person on my team that i could use to remove the buff from the other enemy team but it requires me to again consume a skill point on a team that is not skill point friendly so this was the biggest dilemma i was faced with i wanted to use luca to remove the uh debuffs from the enemies but it was it was always a scenario where i needed the skill points at the same time really yeah, counterproductive especially when you're racing for cycles and unfortunately on wave one it looks like he did get a little unfortunate and ended up spending more cycles than he would have wanted to so he's got a lot of ground to make up here in order yeah to get i was depending on that dot a lot that dot buff earlier. Big ultimate from Sampo there. How do you think he's going to go for time here? I think he's going to struggle just a little bit. Just to, I, I just feel like he just got the bad end of the draft on this one. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, before before Kafka came out, there was a lot of Thanks, Volk. around. I appreciate like, it, brother. The dot dealers, but without that buffing unit, uh, especially something like an Aster would have been huge for him in here for obviously the speed, getting him around to cycle a bit faster. Yeah. But unfortunately, he doesn't have that. So he is... For and what sucks is like Sampo's ult is his ult doesn't come up fast at all guys like it's horrible look at this i'm still trying to get his ult up again and i need to break this guy's shield because sampo's the only one on the team that's capable of breaking this shield and then taking advantage of the dot buff of course just to play with what he has due to the draft and those wind shear dots stacking up huge luckily japard's shield is quite large absolutely it is truly massive but that is a what and in this scenario 
Blade and Lorcha would have been contributing to that guy's shield to where my Sample could have then broken it and then done a ton of more damage. Because I'm running Break Effect Sample and Break Effect Luka. Every piece of damage dealt to Gacha Smack's teams is permanent because he doesn't have a healer. Do you think his units are going to get through this alive and unscathed? Or is he going to lose a few members here and there? I think it's all going to come down to the charm and what happens on this first charm <laughs> yeah. with Kafka. So we're about to find out exactly what's going to happen here. So uh, this was actually really funny. I spent a lot of time, guys, I spent so much time offline trying to work my way around this. I died so many times to Kafka because of the seduction. Once she seduces anybody who's not Japart on this team, I'm fucked. Like I just, if somebody dies and then it just goes downhill from there. So I have Japard's preservation light cone which increases his likelihood to be attacked. It increases his taunt value. But him being a preservation unit, he already has 150 taunt value. So he's more likely to be attacked than everybody else. And then if you have his light cone, he's even more likely to be attacked. So I have to bank on Kafka seducing my Japard. If I don't, then I'm messed up. And the cool thing about this entire scenario, I guess I'll just let play out. It is about to come in, and with no tools at his disposal to deal with it, he's gonna have to take what RNG gives to him. So who would you want the charm to land on if it was gonna happen? I'm kind of thinking, not Luca, because you need to cleanse. So yep. he's the one you just don't want it to happen on, because you need yes. him to cleanse. Uh, to so I got seduced to Japart, which I wanted that. I needed that. If it if he didn't get seduced, I would have to reset and try again. Dispel the buff from the boss. Oh, there it goes on Japart. Oh, and keep in mind, keep in mind, guys, Japart has very high taunt value. And his light cone makes it even more higher. While everybody else has much lower. So he has a way more likelihood of getting taunted than everybody else. But there is a chance that you will taunt somebody else. And in that case, I'm usually fucked. Use the See how he's getting oh, thrashed? It's actually probably the best result now that we see it. It is. You can just allow that Japard to just drop and die and Vulcan. passive to come back. I passive, see you, Vulcan. To be honest, not normally gets used on Japard, but this is going to be a very niche situation. It's yes, like sir. For Gotcha Smack's run. <laughs> yes, sir. So this was calculated, guys. My Japard getting killed. And then coming back like Undertaker from WWE, bro! Rising of the yeah. Shield Hero! There it is. The ah! 100%. He was spamming that button already. Guys, this felt so good because I was like, yes, everything's going to plan. Everything's going to plan. I just want to clear. That was coming. So he did get the freeze on the boss there because he has not stripped the healing off the boss. He needs Luca to strip this boss straight away with the skill right here. Otherwise, the boss so. is going to heal up. Okay, so that was a very important play. I had to make sure that Luca was the one to break Kafka's shield. He has not stripped the healing. Because he's the running, he's break effect. Luka to strip this boss straight away with the skill right So here. what I did, uh, Sampo ult to give the dot increase, which is going to increase the break effect dot, dot damage of Luca. Otherwise, the and then I make sure to break her shield with Luca. Oh, 78,000 damage right there and now when the dot goes in on the next phase ridiculous damage she's done she's ggs 149k that was because of luca yeah unfortunately just do the draft once again i think that was the play the kafka was the play to not wipe because you don't want to wipe especially yeah unfortunately it is going to cost time letting that boss heal up yeah but now you should be pretty fine to do it but unfortunately time is his enemy yeah time's my enemy Absolutely. for sure and this enemy is unfortunately i mean i did what i could guys i'll be honest with you kafka won't be doing her full damage gonna have to rely on with with what i had available to me finish things off here yeah, she should get some pretty big What's interesting? Change. What's interesting is that Pokey did this exact same team on his account, except Luca, he had Yukong instead. Pokey had an E6 Yukong, an E2 Kafka with her signature light cone. E2 Kafka is a 50% increase in dot damage to the party for Sampo and herself, plus the signature light cone. So he did the same comp, and I think he did five cycle clear with an E2 Kafka and signature light cone. E6 Sampo, which amplifies all of his dots, his E4 does, and his E6. Still only got it in five cycles. So it goes to show you just how difficult it is to clear this side with a goddamn Kafka and uh, Yukong and Sampo and Japar, because he had Japar too. The MOC buff though, at least getting some chunk to finish it off. Oh, yes. Looks like it's going to go down. And he's not going to get the cleanse there. So hopefully he can proc the death here. Otherwise, yeah. the, the boss is about to heal up again. 
There it is. Eight cycles. Hey, I'm proud of so my eight cycles. I am so proud. I challenge anybody to go and try and clear that second half with that team comp with the investment that I had, which we're going to go over that, by the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the builds that everyone had, because that's also, again, the most one of the most important things about this whole entire thing. Uh, we'll start off with mine. All right, so here's my Sampo. I just go down the line. Um, my 136 speed with only 2,600 attack. Um, 135 speed on my uh, Luka with only 2,400 attack. 2,600 on my Kafka, and she has a crit cut build because I literally just d didn't have the resources to build up the other version. And then my, my Japard. Japard has 98 speed, slow as molasses, but he has 3,638 defense and 2800 attack i had to do this in order for him to keep my team alive i did not have a choice ideally you want to have some speed so he can go twice but i just didn't have enough resources he's only level 70 his light cone's only level 70 so we had to sacrifice speed for more defense to keep everybody alive finally light cones eyes of the prey at s3 on my uh sampo permata the free-to-play light cone that you can s5 for absolutely free uh on luca Kafka has an S1 good night and sleep well. Uh, again, a very free to play option. You just need one copy of it. And then uh, my Japart, yeah, I got that from the uh, standard banner for losing a 50 50 to a character. All right, Traces, it's 8 8, and that's it. 7 7 and 8 on Luca, 8 9 and 8 on Kafka. And then uh, Jepard, you just pretty much only have to focus on this. You can touch up on this too, so that when he comes back, he has a little bit more life. Finally, Relics, it's a break effect. Sampo, this is attack percent right here, I believe. And uh, this is also, this is break effect, but this is attack percent. Actually, you know what? I think that might be attack percent too. I don't remember. Um, we just threw on whatever we could to make do with what we had on him, but we ensured that we had a very high amount of break effect. I think he had like 150 or something like that. Finally, Kafka, yeah, she's rocking that. And then uh, my Japard's rocking full-blown defense. And then Eidolon investment, which is very important. I had a freaking E1 Sampo. An E1 Luka. An E0 Kafka and an E0 Japard. I had a very, very free-to-play friendly team composition, guys. So we did what we could ideally in that scenario if i had lorcha and blade in placement of these two oh we would 100 percent cleared at least in probably four cycles probably three cycles um for from a a very free-to-play friendly budget bill but i think with blade and lorcha three cycles i could have gotten for sure definitely because the skill points so much more friendly so much more shield breaking uh, I'll probably even make a video out of it just to prove that. But yeah, it, the fact that I had to use Jepard and Kafka on the second half was probably the biggest cripple for my uh, my account. But let's go ahead and move on to the builds of everyone else. Again, we don't have Foo's build, but we will show Tamias and Pokies. Okay, so bro, uh, Pokies Ting Yun had 1151 defense with 4,000 HP. Pure blown survivability play right there. And she also had very high attack, which is solid. That's good. Uh, she had signature light cone of Branya on S1 signature light cone of Branya, and I believe she was also at E6 as well. Um, he's using just a survivability tactic, which you need to do when you have no healer, right? The, the whole goal is don't let anybody die. So that's an E6 uh, Ting Yun. Is Branya? She's at God damn, that's a tanky Branya. 1667 defense holy hell 150 speed good lord that's crazy man that's a lot of speed uh she seems to have her signature light cone as well so he had two Branya light cones that's crazy and he also has a e2 Branya. high investment very uh, very high investment um yukong Oh yeah, this is, I, I actually looked at this. His, his Yukong had a freaking blade signature light cone on her. Again, purely for survivability. 1,500 defense, 3,500 attack. I mean, HP. This was to keep her alive. She had on blade's signature light cone, and she was also at E6 as well. 
Okay, there it is. I was waiting on him to show the E6. And then finally, his Himiko, 70 over 145 crit damage. God damn, that's a stacked Himiko. Um, she has, I think, Jing Yuen's signature light cone. Yeah. Trying to skip skip ahead here so we can move on to the next build. Yeah, Jing Yuen's signature light cone, which is easily the most cracked erudition light cone in the entire game. And she's at E0, I believe. Yeah, she's at E0, guys. Yeah, E0. Okay, there we go. Let's move on to Tamias. Here's Tamias. Tamias has a 46 over what, Jing Yuen? What was that again? 46 over 200% crit damage, Jing Yuen. That's a horrible crit rate, bro. 56 if he uses his skill, though, so it's not too bad. Um, But he has a signature light cone. This was like the brick on his second half, though, so Jing Yuen doesn't really matter. Now this, this is pretty important. E2 Blade. That's massive. Uh, with a signature light cone included in there as well. 66 over 168. That's a fat blade, bro. Signature light cone on Lorcha. Which Lorcha increases the speed of the whole party, I believe. And then E1 uh, Lorcha as well. And then Welt's E1. Oh, shit. I didn't even... He had an E1 Welt. Nice. I didn't even see that the first time. Uh, Welt doesn't look to be built that optimally. He has an incessant rain on his Welt, for crying out loud. So he's really just more about uh, Welt doing his ult to increase the damage. But that E2 Blade is also massive. That that's It makes sense on how he was doing all that damage with Blade without any supports. So that's the investment for all the... Uh, the contestants minus Fu. I, I don't know what he had on his account. He I don't know what he's doing. He's probably busy. But yeah, there you go. There you have it, guys. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. This was a long-winded video. I think this was well over an hour, but I enjoyed it. Uh, let me know you guys' feedback down below. And uh, peace, love, and happiness. I'll catch you on the flip side.